The only man that's got the same move with every club. I'm the only golfer with the feeling of greatness. I'm the only golfer living. It's got the master move and the feeling of greatness. Hey, welcome to the Feeling of Greatness podcast, maybe called podcast in the future. Um, but I'm here with Scott Renfro. Scott, we have a, a long history. Yes, Scott. we do. And I want to tell you, Scott, he, he's pretty much filled in almost every single role at Graves Golf. Um, you, started, you started as a student mm -hmm. of the single plane swing. That's how we met. Scott be, uh, became an instructor with our company. We traveled together for years teaching thousands of people the single plane swing. We've been all over the United States and Canada teaching the single plane swing. So Scott, heavily involved in the instruction part of our company. And then you became more of a management role inside the school management role. He took over the role as a school manager, uh, managing the operations of the schools. Mm -hmm. Did that for how many years did you do that for? Oh gosh, five, five or six. Five please. or six years. And now you've taken on a larger marketing role with the company. Right. It, it's hard to wear one hat with Graves Golf. <laughs> because we find ourselves experts in almost everything because we're a small company, but we also, we, we learn a lot as, as we go along. So Scott fills in a lot of those gaps in the roles. I think now, Scott, you, you, you fit into the role more on the marketing side, development of marketing, um, but, but bringing, bringing the single point swing out to the world more and getting people to understand the method and the stuff we do at Graves Golf. So that's the, kind of a little bit of background on Scott. Now that doesn't say much about our friendship, We've been friends forever, right? Um, so we're very close friends. But I wanted to bring Scott on to the podcast today to really get, for you to understand Scott's experience with the single point swing, because besides working for Graves Golf for the last, how many years now? 12 20, years? 20? 20? Yeah. Besides, besides working for Graves Golf for 20 <laughs> years, um, Scott started out as a, as a student. Right. So, so not only were you a student, you were trying on your own. You were sending in videos before I knew you. Mm -hmm. I saw you hitting balls in your backyard mm -hmm. to, to then stepping into um, uh, becoming a coach and then understanding where our students come from. So probably nobody that I know has a better understanding of where our students are and how they can get where they want to go than you. So I thought it would be really great to get you on the podcast to, to back, back, back your story up to where not only where you came from, how you started figuring this out, and why you're sitting here today helping other people do it as well. Okay. Let's just go back a ways and and, and kind of kind of tell me your thought process and, and feel free to just go into what you were thinking when you first saw it for the first time. Okay, well, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. I um, if I go way back, I did not pick up a golf club until I was probably 17 or 18 years old. First time I picked up a golf club, and I was a football player in high school. Um, was never a golfer, and then a couple of my buddies in high school, you know, played golf, if that's what you want to call it, and so we, you know, we'd go out and just hack the ball around, but I never really got into the game until I became an adult. Um, I was probably in my early 30s. Gosh, that's a long time ago, um, and I decided, you know, I wanted to, I wanted to have a, a, a hobby I could get out and you know, and I'd always, I'd always, I'd always admired golf. You know, I'd watched, you know, loved to watch the Masters. I'd watched the, you know, the. I mean, there's nothing like watching the Masters. Um, and so I'd, I'd admired golf. So I was like, I'm going to take this up. You know, I'm going to do this. I'm, you know, um, and so I had a next door neighbor at the time, had become really close friends with, um, and he was one of those guys that just pissed you off. You know, he's just, he'd pick up a golf club, never took a lesson, and, you know, he could go out and he could beat it around and shoot in the mid-80s every time. And I hated him. I hated the guy. He was an ass. <laughs> but, you know, he, um, but we were just, the, we were the best of friends. But, of course, my competitive side comes out. When you go play with your buddies, yeah. you want to beat your buddies. And so I start searching around because I was horrible. I, you know, I, when, when we used to teach together in schools, I would always open a golf school with this story, and it's 100% true, is when I started the single plane swing, um, a successful round of golf for me, so 18 holes of golf, a successful round of golf went something like this. I would go to the golf course. I would 
pay for my green fee and I would buy two dozen golf balls. And of course they were top flights, you know, top rocks. They were just, I mean, cheap cheapest ones. Could, cheapest ones I could find. And a successful round of golf for me is if I walked off of the 18th tee box and had golf balls left in the bag and 14 intact golf clubs <laughs> left in my bag. Um, yeah, I, it was, so that, that was success. I mean, I, I could, I literally, I could slice the golf ball off the planet. There are probably still some in orbit somewhere. Um, so I, I was bad. I mean, I was just bad at it. And, and it was very frustrating. And then, um, you know, being a amateur golfer, all I ever watched at home was the golf channel. And at the time, natural golf was running infomercials, you know, they were buying the, the old infomercial days, and I watched that infomercial probably two or three dozen times, and finally I was like, screw it, I'm going to buy it. And so I bought the Natural Golf VHS tapes, just to give you a <laughs> reference of the time frame. You know, it was, it, it 98. Was, yeah, 1998. Exactly what it was, what it was, yeah. And, um, you know, because they talked about, I mean, they, were, they, they showed Mo Norman. They were showing this guy, you know, and he kind of looked like me. He had a belly on him. He didn't look like an athlete. He didn't look like Tiger Woods, you know. And I'm like, okay, I can do this. So I get the tapes, and I immediately go out and 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 uh, uh, apply their their four fundamental things that they said. And all of a sudden, I could hit the golf ball straight, mm -hmm. you know. And so, for not knowing any better, I mean, I was completely ignorant of the things I am today. But not knowing any better, I was ecstatic, ecstatic. Now. I mean, I could hit the golf ball straight. I could go find the golf ball afterwards. And all of a sudden, I was able to start. Just because I could find the golf ball, I was shooting better scores. And, and saving money on golf balls. Uh, right, saving a fortune on golf balls. Um, and um, so it was great. Now, the, the one caveat to that is that, or the one downside of that is I, I didn't hit it very far. Mm -hmm. I couldn't hit the ball very far. And I'm a big guy. I mean, I'm just at six feet tall. I've always been strong. and. And, you know, I, I was hitting my drive maybe 220, 230 yards. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, that's not good for the male ego. <laughs> you know, the ego has a hard time dealing with that. Um, and so on the tapes was this young guy uh, named Todd Graves, Little Mo. And I'm like, I like the way his swing looks. I'm going to find that dude. And it just so happened you were three hours away from me in Oklahoma City. I was living in the Dallas-Fort Worth area at the time. And so... I think I talked to Tim first. Yeah. Uh, called up the phone, and this was, I mean, this was in the infancy days of, of your company. And, um, and so I, I don't know if we started with lessons. I no, don't remember. I, I, I do remember. You came up for a school, but you were yeah. the only one in the school. Right. Because that's when we first started. Yeah. Um, you, you're the only one, or maybe, I think you're the only one. I was it. Yeah. Because we, we, I mean, when we were launching the company, Sometimes we'd have one or two people in the schools. Right. And you came up here and basically it became a, a one person golf school. Yeah. Which which that's great. You know, now now we have we, we limit it to twenty people. Yeah, have to school. limit it to twenty yeah. people. <laughs> but but that's when we I got to know you. And here but let me ask you this. Did you send videos before that or after that? Oh God, I don't Because I still have those videos. I those know you still have them and And I'm holding you I hold those ransom to you I know forever. I know. But funny stories there. Yeah. Um Here's what's interesting about your story, because it's very common. It's a common story, right? But, but at the heart of the matter of why you decided, what, what clicked, was it total frustration of what said, I've had it? Did, did you try other, did you take any lessons before? Did you ever try any other lessons before? I did, yes. yeah. So, so that's what you kind of see. Like, I don't know what it is about, the conventional golf swing, but I, I had a, a recent student a couple weeks ago say to me, Todd, I took lessons from everybody, and here he was at, at one of our golf schools, and he said, it just didn't make any sense. Now, that's generally what happens when people see the single plane method, natural golf at the time that you saw it, is it just makes so much sense, right? The it, common it, sense it was the it. it was the light bulb that went off. Um, is... I, I mean, I, obviously, I was very frustrated. I mean, I enjoyed playing. The well, there game. has to be motivation. So the motivation was, I'll I'll do anything, right? I'm, I've hit the I've hit the wall, right? Right, right, right. I don't I don't want to continue on this path. Got it. I, I you know, I, I, and that's I mean, I was there, and I think a lot of the people listening to this may you know can can empathize with that because they're there too. 
Um, you know, so I was just, I was to the point, I was like, I'm either going to quit and go do something different. I'll take up knitting or something goofy because I don't, I, I don't want to keep being, this wasn't pleasant. It yeah. wasn't a pleasant experience yeah. to go play you were, around You weren't having fun. You were, first of all, you, 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 you take your buddy out and you, and you couldn't compete with them. Sometimes it's embarrassing yeah. because, because you're like, I don't want to hold this guy up and, you know, I'm hacking it around. Number three is you don't want to spend a zillion bucks buying equipment, losing golf balls. Or four, it's not fun to not have. Why go out and spend four or five hours of your life and not have fun? And, right. right. But but you saw something in the game that you want. You did hit enough good shots to say, okay, there's something here that I want to do more of. I want to have this experience. I just want to be better at. It. The thing that, so the thing about the the single playing golf swing is watching the infomercials at the time, and it it was just straight common sense. Yeah, one hundred percent common sense. I'm watching this, this, I'm watching Mo, you know, these videos on my, I'm watching you and the infomercials and then, I, and then you on the VHS tapes. And it's just like, they're just starting where they're finishing. It just makes so much sense. It was just a, it was just pure common yeah. sense. Yeah. And then the fact that it was, you know, um, that I bought these VHS tapes, which I mean, in retrospect, the instruction was not very good. But I did. I just did what the tape said, and I did it wrong. Well, I, I know. I know now that I was doing it wrong. But I had success. But I can tell you this: <clears throat> I hear this a lot, and especially back when I was with Natural Golf, and mm -hmm. and you know we, we ended up buying the company by the right, way, right. which you're part of that. But but at that period of time, because I, I was very involved in all the instruction with Natural Golf at that time, is that when people just did the basic thing was. Put the club on a single plane, they got better. Yes, right off the bat. Yeah, because it because it's it's just the it just positions the body in a better way to get to impact. Mm -hmm. So you can't not get better just from doing the basic single plane principle. Then, in, as we continue with your story, you we started working together. You before you worked with the company Graves Golf, and then you started to get your swing sort of getting better. You, you learn more of the important stuff. Mm -hmm. We developed a lot of instruction while you were here. I mean, natural <laughs> yes. golf, we, you and I sat down and said, what's a better way to teach this? Right. I remember us sitting down working on the address position saying, what's the best way to teach the tilt of address? And we worked on a whole thing, yeah. the single plane solution, which was 2010. Yeah. That whole thing was sitting down and rethinking a better way to teach the single plane swing. Right. A lot of that swing, a lot of the, the things we teach developed out of questions you and students would ask right. about why is this that way? What do I, how do I learn this better? How do I check this? So a lot of instruction comes from teaching. Like I teach and I learn what I need to be teaching. Exactly. And that's, I mean, that's the, you talk about, you know, the development of stuff. I remember the very first training club mm -hmm. that had the nail. But yeah, I would cut myself every We'd bleed. We'd bleed. <laughs> we'd bleed. We'd bleed, you know, because yeah. you couldn't get the, your the lead. The first thing. Tra training club would draw blood. Yeah, yeah. we drew blood. Yeah, it's, uh, you yeah. know, and then the, the pain sticks. I mean, we've, we've gone oh, through lots sticks. of Oh, pain sticks. We had pain sticks. We've done yeah. lots of fun stuff. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, not the, it's the, the, two, the, the, the thing that, that convinced me personally to, like, get on the bandwagon as, a, as, as, as part of the team, you know, because I was playing better golf. All of a sudden, my buddy was like, "Well, tell me more about what you're yeah, doing." Yeah, what's I'm like, going Screw on? Screw you, dude. Yeah, you know, yeah. I'm sorry. Keeping this secret. You can go buy the videos over here. Um, of course, that changed. But um, so I, I mean, it, it's it's what you said, and it's and it's in all this experience I've had from starting in that from there to this day is every golfer has that same experience. I mean, you just mm -hmm. you know the people who buy the single plane solution today and just get remotely close to well, the single plane address, right. have some success. Well, okay, so so fast forward a little bit. So okay. what was the lowest of your handicap you've ever been? Like when you were playing, you don't play that much. Like, I don't play we, that much anymore. Especially when you work with our company, we don't play that <laughs> yeah. much. But at the times you were playing a lot, did you get down, what did you get down okay, to? Okay, so when I started, I my handicap I think was about a 24. Yeah. You know, and I, I was keeping scores and doing it. And at, at my lowest, I got down, I think, to a 6.9. Nice. So... So that was what a couple of years, three years, maybe two yeah, years. Yeah, it was a few. Years wasn't a long time. How do we do? How, how if you had to give somebody advice on saying, okay, Scott, you've been through it. Like you've been through it all. Like mm -hmm. there, there's probably nobody that I know that's been through us as an instruction company to get where we're at now. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I think we're a very, very effective teaching company now. 
much better than we were when, when you came to your first school here. So we are really good at teaching the single point swing. Yes. I know that for a fact, because I know what we're capable of. But students come into us where you start from. Tell me, if you had to do it all over again, what would you want to experience? How would you do it? Like if you, if you, if you were just brand new to it today, what advice would you give a student? The is don't waste time trying to figure it out by yourself. Yeah. I mean, the thing that the company has created, uh, or the, the, the processes, the process that the company has created, the learning process that, that we're putting out to people today is not just some random thought up uh, theory. It's actually been used in practice and refined over the course of the last 22 years. I'll tell you a trap. I'll tell you a trap that you and I get into mm -hmm. that our company is in. It's a trap that, that I'm not sure we can ever get out of. And the trap is this. The trap is us trying to be a great instruction company, but we don't know if the person's gonna, gonna get coaching from us or try to do it on their own. And, and let me tell you why it's a trap. Yeah. Let me tell you why it's a trap. <laughs> because when I'm producing information, and I say, let's say I say something, for example, I just did a shot of video a minute ago. Let's say I'm gonna, I'm gonna work on your, grip, your hand position, right? It doesn't matter what I say because you're going to interpret it at some level. Right. So I can give you the absolute best information. I can tell you exactly the lead thumb needs to be in a medium length. It needs to, pressure needs to be in the last three fingers of your hand. You need to have back of your hand line up with the club face. I can give you those words, but there is no, I have no idea how you're going to interpret those words. Right, or how or how, how, the, how the application's going right. to How are you going to apply? I, okay, now I'm going to take one more step. I can show you a video of that, right? Yeah. Now I'm going to show you a video of me doing it. This is, but I have no idea how you're going to perceive that video. Right. Right? I can take another step further. I can actually have you send me a video of that, right? We're getting closer now. Now, <laughs> now we're starting to get communication happening between Correct. us. So we're in a trap. The, the trap is how much of a relationship am I going to have with you communication-wise? Am I going to have enough relationship and communication with you as a student to make sure you get it right? Well, That's the trap we're in. Because it, it if, you, if you just try to do it on your own, I, I cannot, you know me, and I said it in the, in the recent podcast with Thomas that I did, I said I do not like the word try. Because try means, you don't know, try is not doing. Doing means I am absolutely going to do whatever I have to get this perfect and get it right. That's, that's doing it. I'm going to do this. Trying as well, I'll give it a shot. It's trying, it gives you a, a one foot out the door, right? Yeah. So to me, your advice to our students out there is? It, well, it's uh, number one, don't try it. Yeah. Do it or don't do right. it. Do it or don't do it. You either buy <laughs> in 100% and you, and you have to believe that, yes, Mo figured this out. Mo discovered this. Nobody taught Mo this. Yeah. He beat balls around a field yeah. for five years yeah. until he figured this out. So you have to buy into it. You have to believe that the single plane swing is the most biomechanically perfect way to swing a golf What was club. the first thing that most said to me when I met him? It's hard work. Believe in yourself. Yeah, believe in yourself. Believe in yourself. And then how'd you do that? Right. It's hard work. Believe in yourself. Yeah. The very first thing he said, because yeah. I, I said, Mel, how do you, how do, you do that? You got to believe because in believe yourself. In and what he meant by that was, if you don't believe in, in your ability to do this, yeah. like if you don't believe that you can do this yourself, he said that that's that's primary, yeah, to the rest of it, yeah, because you will not put in the effort, energy, time, effort to do it, right. So the second thing, I mean, so the number one thing I'd say to our students, you know, listening to this or somebody that's new to this is, you got to believe it. It's it's it worked, yeah. That's because if you don't believe it, then you do have that one foot out the door. You know, you're you're looking for the quick fix, and I hate to be the Debbie what Downer got, here. What got you to believe it, Mo? Yeah, yeah, but you saw the you saw the infomercial. You saw Mo. You you were impressed by Mo. You you saw what? what but but the, but there's something that clicked in your head that said, "I can do this too." What was that? Just common sense. Okay, it was just the common sense. Yeah, it's it, because I looked at what he's doing, and then I mean, of course, I'm now I'm speaking on it with twenty plus years of experience and and all the knowledge that we've gained over the years on it. But at the time, it's just like. That that just makes sense. Yeah, it's like, I, you know, I, I well, and, and and then secondly, secondly, is 
I had success. I saw success immediately. Mm-hmm. Immediately. I could hit the ball straight. I could get the ball in the air. The ball, you know, the ball flew, you know, where it yeah. used to go like this, it went. Now you made better contact. I'm more making better contact. And so I had success. And, 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 and knowing now that even doing it not perfect, even not doing it just like Mo, I still had success. Yeah. So even now, like, like just for example, we hit balls. It's been a couple months, but yeah. we, we hit balls a couple months ago. We had to drive out to the range. We were pretty busy. And at first, whenever you haven't hit balls in a while, you're rusty. Oh, and yeah. But dude, in, in literally 10 minutes, you're striping it. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just how it works. Now, yeah. I'm not saying you were perfect. No, I'm not. That, that would not be the truth. But, but about every third or fourth shot, you'd rip it. You yeah. hit it perfect. And you're like, man, it just all starts coming back to you. Yeah. Because it's all there. It's all yeah. simple. Yeah. And th- that's what I want for people. I want people to understand it. Let me ask you this question. You got people out there right now that are listening to us talk about the single plane swing. And they're going to ask this question. Why aren't more people on the tour doing it? Because because it's the question we get asked more than anything. It, it, yeah, because everybody and, and here's you know it's 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 funny. But that didn't that didn't seem to bother you. It didn't seem to bother me because I don't compare myself to a 28 year old kid that's six foot four. Yeah. And has three trainers and has meal prep and and you know and practice and, every day and practices six hours a day. I mean, I've been with you to the club. These guys are out there every freaking day. Yeah. I don't have that life. Well, you know, it's funny. If they're not at the club today, they're in Phoenix practicing. Yeah, right? yeah they're someplace warm practicing <laughs> right, today. Right. Um, <laughs> so why aren't we seeing it on tour, on tour more? Because ball striking is not scoring. True. And That's those true. guys are not out there to hit pretty shots. They're out there to shoot a score. But I'll tell you this. We do see it on tour. But, but we do with Bryson. Z you Shabon? see it with Bryson. You see it with yeah. Steve Stricker. Guys are close. They're getting like, there. They're close. And, and the thing is, is here's one thing that all tour players have in common. They can get to impact. They get to impact. They get to impact. impact. So the question shouldn't be, why aren't tour players doing yeah. this? The question should be, what's the easiest way to get the club to impact? You're right. And that's right. what that, until we start seeing that as the question, right. then, then you won't see more people doing this. Because they're starting out, you've seen me do this a zillion times, talk about that one mistake that's being taught in golf consistently yep. is what frustrated you mm-hmm. and what continues to yeah. frustrate golfers around the world. Here, here's what it comes down to, and this is kind of my overall perspective with it, is you have this one flaw being taught as a tenant of golf instruction, which is basically the conventional setup, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So you have this conventional setup. I remember it like it was yesterday. It's like getting a linebacker's position. That's the first thing somebody told me. Really? Getting a position like a linebacker. I'm not sure what that is. I'm not a linebacker. But well, I mean, you know, so you got to have some next flexion knees. You got to be go. ready. And then you just hang your arms hang down. Hang your arms down. I was like, so, oh. And you were taught that, right? <laughs> so that's and it's interesting. Me. It'd be interesting to survey people out there. Yeah. How many people were taught that, <laughs> yeah. right? Okay. I, I, was doing a, I was doing a show at, yeah, I think it was in, is it in Toronto? Forget where the show was. I've done so many shows. I'm on stage. And I said, you know, there is one mistake being taught out there that has is, is created this standard for golf instruction that is creating most of the issues why people can't develop as golfers. Now, people, guys like tour players have learned to overcome it from what you just said. Tons of practice, hard work. They, they, they find ways around it. And they, but, do, but and they, they develop the ability to score. Right, but and my question is, did they really overcome it? Because they get hurt. Okay, it was true. It hurts. Them. That's true. I mean, it's, good point. You know, they good didn't point. Good point. It. That's a good point. But I was on stage doing this thing, yeah. and the guy says to me, he goes, he goes, so you're telling me that when you set up on a single plane, that that's better than a conventional setup? And I'm like, I go, let me do this. Let's trade science, right? Mm-hmm. If you can show me the science of why a conventional setup is a better way. To produce impact, because again, it's all about impact. All about impact. Then I'll do it. Then I'll then I'll then I'll back off and say, you're right, right? Conventional is the way to do it. There is no science to it. No. So my point is that there's no data or evidence that says that the way they're teaching the address position, the way you start a swing, is the best way to get to impact. Right. Now, what you said this earlier is exactly the point. It, it's common sense to start the club on the plane you impact. And so to me, that's why you got better right away. Yes. Because all you did was say, man, it's easier to get the impact from here. I'm just going to sit up there, and you got better. And that's the point of this whole thing. But back to, to, back to the conversation was, there is one flaw being taught. Mm-hmm. And until we see, and you know what's it's funny? P.J. Manuel says the art and science of teaching golf. There's no science in that book. <laughs> yeah. 
Now, there might be well, science of spin rates and ball flight, but there's no science. It has nothing to do with the body. mechanics of the yeah. body. Yeah, I, mean, yeah I, always, like, I always laugh at that. It's, a, it's what always cracks me up is that, you know, oh, yeah, it's, I'm a PGA instructor. Well, I mean, I, I'm not out there to poo-poo the PGA. I mean, it's a wonderful organization. But, you know, I remember when Tim was going through it, you know, years ago, and it's like, how much time did they actually spend teaching me to teach? Like a day. Yeah, it's a byproduct of being an instructor. You, you, yeah. Now, now, look, I know some great teachers out yeah, there, all the but they're still, good. still, in, in, in uh, I have great friends that are they're, they're conventional golf instructors. They're still teaching from a flawed perspective. They still have to deal with a flaw. They're they're good at teaching through the flaw, mm-hmm. but they're still a flaw. Now, you take the average guy out there like you. Who didn't start playing golf when he was eight years old? Right. Who who took the game up late in his life? That wanted to have fun. You don't have time. You have families. You don't have time to practice. Even if you're 60 years old and you're retired, you want to go play and have fun. You better find an easy way, not only on the body, but an easy way to get to impact. And that's where we come in. Right. Right. And it's you know that's it's the thing that because I was in my early 30s when I took it up. You know, so I was past what what science tells us is our primary ages of learning of of developing things, and yet I've been able to develop it to a point where I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. I can go out and be in, and have an enjoyable day. doesn't mean I hit every shot perfect. I mean, well, you know, I, I'm able to go enjoy it. Yeah. And, and, and I've seen that with our students over the years, too. I mean, you know, our average guy out there is, you know, he's, he's retired or semi-retired, and he's just looking to have some enjoyment. And But to see them to be able to to adopt and go through the process of learning something new, of developing a new feeling, of working through that, has been it's 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 very inspiring to me. Well, and 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 and, and I, I mean, I've got relationships with students yeah, that that I, I mean, good lord, it's crazy. I mean, well, it has a lot to do with your personality, but but you know, you basically it, it, let me let me put you on the spot because no crap, okay, okay, I'm gonna put you on the spot here because this is gonna sound like a sales pitch, but I want to do this anyway because okay. I want to put you on the spot. If you were new today, yes to sing the single plane in Graves Golf for the first time. Mm-hmm. What would, and um, look, we have training aids, we have coaching programs, we have schools, we have online training. Tell me, I, I, if I'm new to this, what advice you would give me to sh- absolutely shortcut and expedite my ability to do what you have done is go from a struggling golfer to a golfer having fun. What would you do right now? So I would... It's, it's, it sounds completely salesy, but it's 100% the truth. I would have every training aid that we've got that we've developed because they've all been developed to help me develop the technique. That's first. I'd have every training aid. Number, number two, um, I, would be in the, I would be in the coaching program. I'd be inside the Single Plane Academy. I, I mean, you know, and I would be actively sending well, stuff explain, to Explain the what that means. What, like, so I'd be in the Single Plane Academy in the sense of this, is that – and. Is that fundamentally the, the single plane swing is perfect in my opinion? It's one hundred percent perfect. There's nothing better out there, and all any golfer has to do is to match that model to get it better. And so I would be inside the single plane academy to have the ability to shoot a video of my swing to analyze for myself, but then also to send to a coach so I could have to one of our coaches to 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 Clay or to Trent. I mean, these guys I've known for years, and they're phenomenal at what they do so that I was making sure I was doing everything perfectly. You know, I would master the address and the grip position first. I would be perfect at it, perfect at it every time. Um, you know, and, but th- th- that's the, the big thing is I would, I would be getting feedback yeah. from not only for myself, but also, you know, so I could look at things, but I'd also be getting feedback from a second set of eyes because yeah. if there's one thing that I've learned in this process is that Change is uncomfortable. Yeah. I mean, the number one comment I remember from golfers, at, 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 from our students at schools is that, man, that feels weird. Well, no shit. Yeah. We haven't done it before, so yeah. it does feel weird. Well, so weird isn't bad. No, like weird's, weird's, so weird's not bad. Weird's a good thing. See, the, so remember how many times we'd say this when the students say, that feels weird, but good. It'd be yeah, good. no, good. Good. Because if it felt the same, you're, you're not changing anything. Yeah, nothing's changed. It, it, so changes, changes is, feels weird. Right. But the other thing, too, that... You kind of are hinting, hinting on there is that accountability. You got to be like, accountable to something. This is where I think people drop the ball. Yes. And as coaches, we 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 str- we struggle to keep people accountable. I'm telling you, you know where I think is is amateur golfers, and I'm I'm I was guilty of this for a long time, and I still am to some extent. And I think the listeners will will well this will kind of 
be a gut punch to them too, is that we're accountable to the golf ball. Is that we go out and we play yeah. the game and our accountability is from what the golf ball does. Yeah. So, you know, oh, I'm slicing it. Oh, I'm hitting it fat today. Or I've got, I've developed this, this pulled shot. And so we're accountable to what the golf ball does. And it, it, the challenge, the <laughs> well, I, chal- got, go I, got, I got an interesting point for you. You know, Reed Howard. Yes. Roberto Libriha. Mm-hmm. Um, Josh Bamberg. Yep. Three highly developed players, good athletes. You know how much I teach them now? No, that's hardly very, any. Hardly, yeah. Like Josh would contact me once in a while and send me a video. Yeah. You know why? Because he's got it. They figured it out. Yeah. And, and here's what he knows it, how to self analyze. Yeah. And it's because, and so the difference between them and the typical student is that they set out to get it. To get the mechanics of the swing, not the ball flight. Get it, right. They, they, they knew enough about golf to know that when, when you change a club face position, it changes ball flight. Mm-hmm. So I just got to change position. So, so they just got it, right? Yeah. And so we spent our process in them getting it. And then, and so my job to me, when I see my job as is, and I know this is going to sound a little counter to me, I, I want you to get it and never need us again. And, and so now, Going from there to there, right? Yeah. That's what we have to do. That is my goal, is to get people to understand the swing enough to be able to get the positions right, get the feedback, learn how to do all that, and just get it. Right. And then if they need to check it, check it. But then the model's there, so they can just fix it like this. Right. That's what these guys have figured yeah, out Yeah, and when you do. get stuck, when you get stuck on something, hey, I'm stuck. Help me. I'm stuck. That's, that's, you know, that's, I mean, that, and that's what... And it's, it, it, and it's, it's so enough, fundamental, though. Yeah, and it, it's always fundamental. I mean, it's, you know, you talk, I'm, I'm thinking about you know, new, new students. It's like you got to get some kind of a okay. feedback. What you keeps our to. students from getting it? What keeps them from getting it? Okay, if I'm going to be perfectly no, honest. Not, you can say whatever you want. We can always cut it out of this podcast. Okay, good. I mean, if, it's, to, if it's mean. Not, they're lazy. What do you mean by that? Well, like, because they, because I think they <laughs> look at golf as a hobby. Is lazy not accountable? It, they're unaccountable. Okay. They're unaccountable. unaccountable. That's, that's okay. probably a better word. They're unaccountable. Okay. And it, 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 I think, of it, and, and I just know this from spending a lot of time conversing with our students, and, um, you know, they look at golf. Golf is a hobby. It's not a job to them. And it's like, eh, it's my hobby. You know, I'm not going to invest a bunch of money in my hobby. Now, that, that's to say, you know, they won't invest a bunch of money in their golf game, but, you know, they've got a 57 vet at home that, that their debt yeah. is, or, you know, that they've restored completely. Here's what I look. Here's what yeah. I look. Here, I, I guess the, 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 the commit, they're not committed to, they haven't com- fully committed to it yet, to learning it. I, I don't know. That might, that's, that, that seems might, might be a little off base. But. I, think, I think what happens to me is they're unaccountable. They're unaccountable to the model, but they're unaccountable to the model because they don't understand that by mastering the model, they get what they want, because it, it, so so, so they, they haven't fully bought into the fact that if they do somewhat that. somewhat, but look at how people practice. Oh God, yes. I mean, <laughs> so if you look at how people practice, like like let's talk about people listening to this podcast. Yeah. If you if you watch me practice, there is a reason I'm out there practicing, and the number one reason is I'm either I'm either working on a fundamental that I'm trying to get master, so I'm not really caring about ball flight. I don't give a crap about it. I just. I'm probably have a video camera out there. How many times you see me go on the range, work on something, and not have my iPod, iPad out there to video? Yeah. Never. Every, every time. Never. Time. Never. I'm always out there checking it, right? Or if I'm not working on a fundamental position of my swing, I'm out there working on with the alignment trainer hitting at targets. So I'm very focused on target. But my point is I'm not doing both at the same time. Right. And so my practice, and if you're good at and the tour players I teach, guys like Reed, are so good at practice. They know what they're like. Reed, I'll give you. I'll give you a story about Reed. Reed would fly all the way in from wherever he was in the world for a session. He maybe he's going to spend a, a day with me. You know how many things we worked on in that session? One. One. And I would give him one thing to work on, and he'd go. And he'd go. That's what I wanted. Thanks, what I need. Let me go work on that. And I wouldn't see him for a day. And then he, you know what? We did day two when he was here. Is it right? We checked it. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, that's the that's the accountability level because that one thing meant so much to the big picture. Right. People don't want. Here's another thing for you. People think a lesson should be an hour. A lesson Why? should take two minutes. Why? Why should a lesson be an hour? Yeah. A lesson should be. Here's the one thing that you need to work on. Yeah. Yeah. 
and then I'm going to keep you accountable to get that right for an hour or however long it takes. Maybe it's two hours. Maybe it's 10 minutes. But if you can't keep yourself accountable, I need to be here to keep you accountable. Right. I had a, a, stu a student recently come to me, and I, I, he, he said, Todd, he was desperate, right? And I wouldn't teach him. I said, I want to teach you because you're, I, because all your friends say you'll never practice. And he goes, yeah, I don't practice. And I said, then I don't want to teach you because you're going to have to put some time into getting it. But you know what I said to him? Mm. I said, if you're not going to practice, there's only one way I'll teach you. I'm going to have to be here every time you practice. He goes, okay. I said, let's practice every day then. So I worked with him for two weeks every other day. But I was there every time he practiced. And you know how fast he was getting it? I mean, mm -hmm. it was remarkable. Yeah. Because I was, what, what was I doing? Keeping him accountable. Yeah, accountability. That is the one thing I think that, that amateur golfers, you know, the road I came down on is that, is that we want, we know what we want. We have a picture in our mind of what we want. We want to go out and enjoy the game. We want to hit the golf ball straight. We want to hit it far. Um, you know, and we, and we know it, intuitively we know that something has to change. And even though the model, you know, looking at Mo, this makes so much sense. Um, but it's it, it's that commitment to to going through the process of change because that process of changing you live through it when you converted to Mo I've lived through it trying to adopt it and it's 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 challenging yeah. because and here's why and but, I, but, 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 but no, let me let me let me piggyback, piggyback on that anything is challenging however if you want it bad enough number one yeah okay number two is I would I'd be asking this question. And I, and I would ask it of you, and we've been talking about, you and I have been having lunch together quite a bit lately, and we've been talking a lot about this. If we want to change something, let's say, Scott, I want to go get in really good shape, right? It's a lot easier if somebody's with me slapping the shit that I'm going to eat out of my hand <laughs> right. and getting me out of bed and dragging me to the gym and making me work out, right. staying there going, Todd, four more, three more, showing up, making sure I show up. If I have somebody, if I hired somebody in my life, I'd get in great shape because Number one, they're keeping me accountable to what I'm not good at. And I said in the last podcast, I am not very good at being accountable to myself. I'm not, right? Are, are any of us? Are any, really? If I have a big enough motivation and a picture out there, I can do it. Um, however, the question we need to be asking ourselves is, what do we want and how can I get accountable to it? And then how do I put something in place that will do that? Those, if we can answer those questions, we can motivate ourselves to almost do almost anything. Right, right. And I think it's with with our students. I mean, it, it's the same process I went through. Is a couple things you have to be willing to do when you're making a change in a fundamental. Or you're making a change in something is you got to ignore the golf ball. You can't. You know, I I can't tell many times. I mean, in this very room, that we were working on something on my swing, and I I probably I think I put a few golf balls through the opposite wall over there because I was shanking it. But when I looked at it on video, it was right. Mm -hmm. And that's what was important because, because what was important, I changed okay. my focus on what was important. You, what was important you became was account, You became accountable to the model. Right. See, that, that, that's the answer. That, that, yeah. Whatever, you got to find out what you're accountable to. You weren't accountable to hitting good shots. You were accountable to, to the, model. the model. Okay, this is where the disconnect happens. Yes. And I'm a, uh, between instructor and student. Yep. I am trying to keep you accountable to the model. And you're you keep trying to keep yourself accountable to hitting good shots. They don't work together. No, they don't. Now, when you get good, they can work together. But when you're in the learning phase and you're changing your swing from a conventional swing to a single plane, or you're developing your swing and improving your your skills, you those two do not equate. Good shots and model don't equate right away. No, and, and no. it's very hard for people to digest that and, as an instructor. So we have nets. We have ways to do it. Proper training. But here's the deal. I know that my success, when I transitioned to a single plane, and I had Mo. Mo was not a great teacher. No. Mo was not putting my hands where I want him to put it. He was saying, you need more of this in your swing. I mean, I was, I was translating Mo. So I, I had that whole thing to figure out. But what I became accountable to was a video of Mo and me with that video. And now I was lucky that I could go video Mo and ask him questions and go take a different angle and I could go develop. So I was lucky to have Mo there with me, but I was be I became accountable to that video. Yeah. If I, if it matched the video, that was right. And so and I and I rapidly improved because of that. And Scott, I go to I teach at golf schools. I'll sh I'll show somebody their swing on video, and it'll be so far from the model, and I'll be like, Hey, I go. This is a really easy. Fix. Just go to that position. 
And they, they, they go back to the range and they do what they were doing 10 minutes ago. Because, and I'm they're, like, trying to, because they're trying to hit a golf I ball. I know. It's the point I wanted to make is that the biggest strides I've made, and, and this, is, this is true, I, this will be true to everybody listening to this podcast. This, it's, it, this is just the, it's just the human learning. The biggest strides you're going to make in, a, in matching the model are when there's not a golf ball present. So practicing, I mean, I, I, I get in trouble all the time because my training aids are scattered all over my living room. And so it's like I will get up and grab the single plane trainer and I'm like, I'm working on my positions and I'm, you know, I'm working on my grip and my address. I sit there and I hold it. So, you know, the, and all of the, the, the biggest strides I've made in matching the model have been away from a range in that I'm, I'm, I'm making the movement, I'm getting myself into the positions, I'm practicing, and I'm, I'm, I'm going through the repetitions, I'm looking at it to make sure I'm doing it correct, I'm comparing myself to the model, but I'm not trying to perform. Yeah. I'm not trying to perform. I think perform. it's a good word. A, a performance is a good word. You know, I'm not trying to perform Get a result. at the time. And what's shocking is that I do that long enough, like through the winter, or, I mean, when I'm just not, you know, when I'm busy, literally, I mean, I'm talking about, Five ten minutes a, a yeah. day. I'll just oh I'll walk by. I'm gonna grab grab my trainer. Yeah. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go get my positions. Um, it's like then all of a sudden I go to the course and I kind of get the rust knocked. I was like holy crap, I still got it and it's better than it was. I'm hitting shots like I've never hit them before, and I hadn't hit a golf ball in months because I, but all I did was train. I'm see the thing. I think the disconnect for students. There's it's I mean number one it's the golf ball, you know because but number two is um, our bodies are a machine and we're using a tool to hit a ball on the ground. So we're using a stick. So what we're really trying to train when we're learning anything, not just a single plane swing, we're trying to train the machine. And the human brain is a fascinating thing. It'll teach, it'll learn anything you teach it. Okay. It'll learn anything you teach it. That, that, that's simple. I yeah. mean, to me, that's simple. Yeah. Just, just, Put the machine where you want it. Put the machine and, where you want it and, and do it over and over and over again. And repeat. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really that no, I simple. I agree with that. It's I absolutely that. that simple. I, mean, I, I always say yeah. in my schools, the golf swing is rather simple. It is. Now, you're not simple. We're not, we're not simple and, creatures. And we, so we're not we, simple machines. We come in with baggage. Right, we do. We, we come in with pre-recorded baggage. <laughs> yes, we do. But at the end of the day, we have to break it down into its basic elements, just like the basic fundamentals. Yeah. We have to put our body in new positions, yep. and we just got to repeat those positions, and, repeat. and then eventually throw the ball in there and see if the if we can repeat yeah. it. That that to me is it. Now, the question is, are people willing? I'm going to go back to the willingness to do that. This is where I think, again, as a coach, me as a coach, I always look at my job as as a coach to teach you what you don't know, because you don't know what you don't know, to get you to do what you're uncomfortable with. Yeah. And in 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 in, in teach in, in those two things put together, show you what you don't already know and get you to do it, which you're, because you're not comfortable doing it yourself. That is my job as a coach. Right. And so if I'm doing those two things, then you will change and learn. Mm -hmm. And that's what I feel is my job. And then obviously to keep you accountable to make sure that you're doing it correctly. Other than that, you you got to do the work. Right. We I never I never take credit for for a student getting better. Uh, Reed Howard's development of a golf swing or, or the guys that have really developed well, the guys that I've worked with, I don't take any credit for that. They will give me credit for that. They'll say, man, you show, I would never have known this if you had done it. Well, fine, that's great. But they had to put in the reps, right? They, they had to do, do the work. Reps, yeah. All the knowledge, I can give all the knowledge in the world. I can show them everything they need to know. But if they're not going to put in the reps, they'll never learn it because learning it comes from repetition. So you have to go through that process. And, mm -hmm. and so accountability, I think the title of this podcast is going to be Accountability. Yeah, because it should be. Because you, in your whole process, became accountable to the model. Right. And that's what changed. It became my goal. Yeah. My goal, I mean, my, my goal shifted. And my goal when I started this was to hit better shots and be able to go out and enjoy a round of golf and not lose two dozen golf balls and break three, three shafts along the way. Well, I accomplished that. You know, and I can still go that, do that today. I mean, I can still do that today, but... But as I, I developed a better understanding and appreciation, and, and, and quite frankly, a love for Mo as a human being, um, you know, I, I became, my accountability is like, I want to do that exactly. Exactly. I want to do exactly. I don't want to do that so I can show that off to the world. I just want to do that because, well, because I want to do it. Well, now, now we're in a position now where we just want to help other people. Right. I, I get more enjoyment from watching others 
have success with it than I do having success myself. Much more enjoyment. Oh yeah, it's always better to watch. I mean, I, I, that's one of my favorite parts. I mean, all the years, all the miles we traveled and <laughs> the times we've been on the road together and stuff. It's nothing was ever better than just watching. I mean, it's light bulbs go off. Light, watching light bulbs go off and, and li- eyes light up. Yeah. I mean, you got guys that are 65, 70 years old and it's like they're kids again. Yep. It's the best thing in the world. That's why we do what we do. Yeah, it is. It's the best thing in the world because they're they're excited about something again. I mean, it's it's so it's just it's very rewarding. So I'll, we'll, we'll wrap it up with this. But I had I had a student a month ago down in Orlando, mm-hmm. and and I believe it or not, I hear this a lot. And he says to me, he goes, Todd, he goes, you know, he goes. I don't know if he had, it was married previously or not because I'm not married. He goes, I sold my business. He goes, I got, he goes, I got plenty of money to do whatever I want to do. He goes, so money's not an issue. He goes, all I got is golf. And so he goes, my days are spent just to find ways to enjoy this game. And he goes, single playing has helped me enjoy my days. I hear that a lot. I hear, I hear how much value people are getting from enjoying the game. I get it. I get it because you and I have this discussion a lot. It, it's important. One of my, and this is a personal thing for me. One of my personal issues years ago was not doing something valuable. And maybe we all kind of face that, but mm-hmm. I always thought, you know, my dad was a doctor. Mm-hmm. My mom was a, an educator, right? Very high, highly educated people. I'm a golf pro, <laughs> right? I mean, yeah. I'm a golf. Am I really contributing by doing this? The more that I teach as I get older, and now I'm the age of my students a lot of times now, right? Mm-hmm. So as I, as I, as I become a, a, a more of a teacher and more people know what I do and who I am, I see the more of the value that I create. Mm-hmm. Because I think, and so I had a, I had a company recently um, contact me about writing an article about Single Point Swing. He wanted to do it for a golf magazine. He, he basically writes articles and goes to the magazine. And he says to me, he goes, I want to write, can I write a story about you guys? I'm like, I don't want another story about us. I said, yeah, as much press and stuff as we get out of this, great. You're going to, come, you're going to talk about Mo, which is great. You're going to talk about single point thing, which is great. We're going to go have this conversation. I've done this a hundred times. You can just copy one of the other articles that are written about us, right? Nothing. Mm-hmm. And I said, but if you're going to come write a story about us, here's what I want you to write about. I said, I want you to write about what I consider the people that are getting lost in our society. He goes, what do you mean? I said, how many times does the Golf Channel mention a 65-year-old guy? Never. I go, and the 65-year-old guys out there, the aging golfers, like me, mm-hmm. are basically not getting uh, communicated to. Nope. They put the tour players on their PJ Tour. The Champions Tour barely gets any coverage. No one talks about aging golfers playing better golf. And I'm like, so if you want to do an article about us, here's what I want you to talk about. I want you to talk about this lost part of our society. And by the way, these are the majority of the guys playing the game or guys over the age of 60. Right. Are the majority of the guys that can afford to play, that are out there playing, that are spending their time traveling around. And it's like I mentioned to the guy who came for this, the lesson. He said, this is what I do. This is all I want to do is play golf. Let's talk about those guys and how we can speak to them, their language, teach them an easier way to play, I go, I want to talk about that. I don't want to talk, I, I don't mind talking about Mo. I don't mind talking about the single plane. Well, let's talk about the guys that really need it and how we're helping them. Right. And let's go to the AARP, the people that they communicate with that are in that world that need to be helped. Well, it's, in, yeah, it's, it's interesting. I remember you talking about that student that drove down. And I mean, we've all got stories of that, like that with students, with friends. They're friends now. But, um, you know, what we, I, I think the, in retrospect, the interesting thing is the the thing we take up as a hobby becomes a lifeline, and I think that's what golf becomes no. for a lot of us. It's not not a lifeline in the sense that we die without it, but it's like it's our it's our respite, it's our escape. Look, it's it's our, escapism. It's our it's our Look, safe, it's, safe area. golf golf. You know, the outsiders look at golf as a recreation. Like if I go play pickleball, which I've never played before, by the way, but let's say I went and played pickleball. I'm I'm probably at this point not going to call myself a pickleball player. I'm going to observe it as a Would that be a pickleballer. Pickleballer. <laughs> then I'm going to I'm, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to pick up something like that just to, just to look at it yeah. as an outsider. Right. But there's going to be people that are into it, right? Oh yeah. And those people, it's a lifestyle to them. It's a lifestyle, right? They're looking for their next game. 
Well, well, golf's a lifestyle. That's why in this podcast, golf and life. Golf is a lifestyle for people. People who don't have it as a lifestyle don't really understand it. No. But it is part of my life. Like I plan my I plan my schedules around what I'm going to do playing golf. You give me a good weather. I'm looking at on Sunday. I'm looking at the weather for the week to know what days I'm going to go hit golf balls this mm-hmm. time of year because the weather's crappy here this time of year. I'm looking for the 60 degree day, which with no wind, the only day of the week I'm going to hit balls that day. And so I take my schedule and I call my appointments. I'm, hey, can I cancel my Wednesday appointment and do it on Thursday? <laughs> I'm looking for, yeah. right? So it's because the golf's a lifestyle to me. And I do that kind of naturally. Yeah. I, I look at my schedule going, when can I? Hey, Scott, where do we meet half the time? At the club. Because Yeah, we meet at the club. Because we can hit a few balls and meet. Yeah. So golf's a lifestyle. And I think people who really are into it understand that. And that's why it is a big part of our lives. And as I get older, it's a bigger part of my life, yeah. right? Yeah. And but I mean, golf's not the only thing people have, but it is an escape. It is the place where I go to enjoy moments. It's a place where I go to get away from the world and and do my thing. Yeah. And yeah, that's what I think we all do it for. It's interesting. I mean, and, and I look at my. I mean, you know, my own journey in retrospect. I mean, I if you would have asked me, you know, in two thousand one, two thousand two, um, before I really, I can't remember when I started this, but if you would have asked me if you know, in 2000, at the end of 2022, or, you know, that I would have been, that I'm involved with a golf instruction company, I'd, I'd say, man, you're crazy. I don't know, I don't know the first thing about golf. Are you nuts? Um, but it's funny how, you know, it's just funny. It's, it's, it's funny how these, how, the, how things progress like this. Um, and it's like you said, when we opened the podcast, it's, you know, I, I, it is the one thing I always felt like I've been able to bring value to our our customers is, and, and to our team, too, is because I've walked the path that all of our customers are on, and I'm still walking it. I, by no means am I off of it. You're still on it. We're just in different spots on it. But, you know, so I can, I can really understand and empathize with what they're going through. Um, well, I think to your point there, which is a good one, is that, and, and people say, well, you, how, how long is it take me to get this? Well, it's it's, it's just my journey. It's, it's just it, a journey. It's my lifestyle. Yeah. So I don't ever get it. Like I, I I like you can say Todd, you got the swing down. It's my it's it's I'm in the process, always in the process of of like, do I have it? No. Yeah, you think I, you don't have it. Everybody else watches you and think it's perfect. I have it, but and you know what? Mo, Mo, Mo never my mind, I don't, I don't, I don't care because right. I'm, in, I'm on the, I'm in the path. It's I'm on journey. the journey. Yeah. It's a journey, so I don't ever look at it that way. Right. I look at it as like, hey, this is what I do. Um, this is my model that I work off of. I, I, I'm good at it, and I, I want to continue to keep getting better and better at it. And so I, I, the, the getting it thing is, is part of the. And, and that's thing probably too. something I, I mean, if I were giving advice to our students too, is like, you know. That are that are just taking this up is you know obviously get the training aids and because they're going to teach you get coaching, get get in get some feedback from somebody. But then the other thing is stop looking for a destination because yeah. what you're going to find this is what you're going to find is that you're going to sit down one day and look back and realize holy crap I'm a completely different golfer. Yeah, that, that's it. I, it's, I'm it's, a, it's so you, you, what you said right there is exactly what what. Well, how we should wrap this podcast yep. up. It's a transformation. It is. It, it, because it's not about getting it, it's about transforming. It is. You become a different golfer, and I think that's a great way to put it, because, because I'm a different golfer now than I was when I played in college, and I'm still in the evolution of becoming that mm-hmm. golfer, and, and I love that process. I don't want that process to end. Matter of fact, I like that process. I like practicing. I like working on my game. I'll go out there today with Tim, and he'll show me, check this wedge shot out, and we'll work on a different wedge shot. I'm always in dev- trying learning new things. Mm-hmm. That's part of the evolution of it the is. joy of it. And so, yeah, I mean, why, why screw up having fun when you're always in the process of developing? Right. We're evolving and transforming all the time with a single plane swing. Right. I love that part of it. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Hey, Scott, we'll get on here again. I mean, what we should do, the next podcast we do together, we should bring in like students and talk to them. Yeah. That would be really fun to do. Oh, yeah. Like absolutely. just like bring on some students and say, hey, Tell us about your journey because you guys can share your experiences. Maybe <laughs> share some war stories on their oh, processes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But thanks for joining me on the podcast. Thanks for having me. All right. We'll talk to you soon. All right.